Lying was all the rage in 1927 after Charles Lindbergh soloed across the Atlantic in the spirit of St. Louis and touched down in Paris to a hero's welcome. Kids and grown-ups across America wanted to fly like Lindbergh. While few people got to go up in a real airplane, millions of young people did the next best thing. They built and flew models. With the desire to fly and model building skills, Bill Bibich Cow and Sam Goldenberg established the Comet Model Airplane and Supply Company of Chicago in October 1929, a few weeks before the stock market crash. They were still in high school. Initial capital, $5. Despite the depression of the 1930s, Comet Model would become a great model airplane company. By 1939, Comet would be selling millions of balsa wood kits. What was also great about the Comet Model company was it gave so many people who worked there during the depression the opportunity to make a good livelihood and a life doing what they loved to do. not Al Capone's gang. It's the sales and design staff of the Comet Model Airplane and Supply Company coming out the front door of the Model Airplane Factory on 29th and LaSalle. Two months earlier, Comet began a year-long celebration of its 10 years in business. Comet staff of 300 employees includes eight designers and six draftsmen drawing kit plans for models of military and commercial airplanes. 20 full-time salesmen call on 6,000 dealers nationwide, and there's a branch office and sales room in New York City. Comet founders Bill Bibichkow, Sam Goldenberg, and Comet Model's third partner, Lewis Cap, recently told Time magazine that gross sales of its balsa wood model airplane kits would top $1 million in 1939. That's a far cry from 1929 when Bill and Sam, sons of Eastern European Jewish immigrants, opened their doors in the back of Bill's father's tailor shop. Opening day sales totaled 43 cents. October 1929 gross sales, made after school and on Saturdays, $5.59. They invested another $8 to print up a one-page price list and hired their first salesman, Lewis Cap, to call on dealers. In the mid-1930s, teenage model builders built Comet's display models. After graduation from high school, these boys went to work full-time for Comet and designed many acclaimed Comet model planes. The free flight built-up models were either rubber band or gas powered. Once launched into the air, they could go anywhere. To manufacture and box their kits, the Comet Model Factory uses the same straight-line production methods as the big automobile factories. Every draftsman is a champion model builder, brags Comet's 1936 catalog. That's why Comet kits are perfectly designed and engineered a pleasure to build, and a joy to the eye. Not 
everyone believed Comet's claims, model airplane designer and contest champion Carl Goldberg told a Comet salesman, I'm angry with Comet. Your kit boxes say the planes will fly hundreds of feet, and those are strictly made-up numbers. But the Comet partners had heard of Goldberg's skills and successes. They offered him a job in the design department. Goldberg's model airplanes and the Comet model organization soared to new heights after he joined Comet in January 1939. During its 10th anniversary Jubilee year, Comet will double its 1939 output from 5 to 10 million kits. February 21st, 1941. Model airplane design wizard Carl Goldberg was honored by the West Coast model airplane industry with a testimonial banquet in Los Angeles. Sharing the dais with Goldberg and his lovely wife Beth were movie star Freddie Bartholomew and film director Earl C. Kenton. Famous among model builders before his 21st birthday, Goldberg is revered for his contest-winning Clipper, Zipper, Mercury, and sailplane gas models that have made the Comet Model Company of Chicago one of the top model airplane kit manufacturers in the country. Los Angeles is just one stop on Goldberg's two-month cross-country tour to present a series of demonstrations and informal chats. Here he is in Bakersfield, California. Goldberg was 13 years old in 1925 when he started building model airplanes. His first models were made out of the slats of egg and orange crates. As a flyer, Goldberg holds six world records. Gas models designed by him took five out of six first places at the 1939 Nationals. His zipper model, featuring a high rate of climb and slow gliding descent, is an innovation in design. Rather than keep his know-how to himself, the ever-modest Goldberg prefers to share it with young model builders. It's a pleasure to tell these fellows the things I've learned. the balsa wood mill, Comet Model has become a marriage mill, too. Carl Goldberg married clerk Beth Cap a few months before their cross-country trip. Chief designer Bob Reeder married Executive Secretary Bernice Jordan in May 1941. Then there were Ruth and Eddie. They were typical of the young men and women from modest backgrounds who came to Comet looking for work and found much more. That's Ruth Gardner at the 1941 National Model Airplane Championships in Chicago. She's Comet Model's head bookkeeper. She's been working at Comet since 1936. Eddie Kapitanoff, CAP for short, is the Los Angeles salesman for Comet. Louis Cap, one of the Comet Model partners, is Ed's first cousin. Eddie had opened Comet Western in 1933 
in a storefront in Hollywood. For Eddie, as for many American-born children of immigrants, his business became a family business. His Uncle Harry, his sister, his dad, his cousin Harold, his Uncle Emmanuel and Emmanuel's wife Audrey, as well as Eddie's cousins Art, Anne, Emma, and Emma's husband Phil, all went to work for Comet Western. After the meet, Eddie asked Ruth to marry him. He was sure. She had to think about it. September 9, 1941, the Comet Newsogram reported it this way. This paragraph is devoted to two swell people who will become united in the holy bonds of matrimony. Ruth Gardner, Comet's head bookkeeper, and Ed Cap, Comet Western's head man, soon will become one head. The girls in the office throw Ruth a bridal shower a few nights before she boards a train bound for Los Angeles. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. December 9th, 1941, Comet Model Production Chief Bill Bibichkow receives a phone call from the U.S. Navy's Special Devices Section. The next day, Bibichkow is on his way to Washington, D.C. It seems that U.S. military personnel have received almost no aircraft identification training. Some gunners would be as likely to shoot down an American Curtis P-40 as a Japanese Zero. I was amazed at what was used for aircraft identification. Bibichkow says. Nothing was available for the Pacific Theater. Plastic models for the European Theater were crude. Bibichkow returns to Chicago and the Comet Model Design Department swings into action, drawing up dozens of airplane plans for the U.S. Office of Education's Identification Model Program. The 172nd scale model plans are given to high school students in woodworking and craft shop classes across America so they can build and donate their model airplanes to the war effort. But the war work will keep Comet from its regular production. And Uncle Sam wants Comet's manpower. Eight months before Pearl Harbor, in the company newsletter, there had already been reports of draft notices. Now Comet Model is off to war, and so is the Comet Model News. Each week will bring you the latest Comet Model projects for the military, at least those that aren't top secret. Will Comet's principals and famed designers get drafted? What's the latest gossip Ruth gets in letters from her girlfriends in the office? Will Comet model be able to deliver its line of kits to its dealers? Will it survive the war? The next installment of the Comet model news is coming soon to a theater near you. and back real fast. We don't even have to stop for oil or gas. Load your bombs into the wings in case someone is mean. Let them know that we can swing that B-19. 